This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hi guys, in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a very simple stuffed teddy bear using Blender. This is a beginner friendly tutorial. Before I start the tutorial, just want to wish you guys a happy new year. It's now 2020. And hey, why not make your 2020 a year where you explore new skills, deepen your existing passions and get lost in creativity with Skillshare's online classes. In case you didn't know, Skillshare is an online learning community for creative people where millions come together to take that next step in their creative journey. There's so much to explore and what you find might just surprise and inspire you. There are thousands of classes for creative and curious people on topics including 3D modeling, animation, illustration, design, photography, and so on. Skillshare offers classes designed for real life so that you can get a step ahead in your creative journey. Most classes are short and tend to be under 60 minutes to fit your busy routine and won't require you to put your life on hold. I'm also a member of the Skillshare community. Not only do I teach, but I join other classes as well. A class that I highly recommend is the Character Animation Basics class by B. Grandinetti. The class teaches you how to design, draw, and animate a dancing character starting from scratch. This is one of the best classes that I've taken on character animation and you really do get to learn the entire process of designing the character and also ending up with a really nice looking animation. Skillshare is incredibly affordable with an annual subscription at less than 10 bucks a month. It's much more affordable compared to an in-person class or workshop. Since Skillshare is sponsoring this video, I'm able to give you guys two months of free membership to all the premium classes available on Skillshare. Click the link in the description to get two free months of premium membership and explore your creativity in 2020. Back to the video. First thing that I want to do is I'm going to go to the front view. So go to view, viewpoint, front. Then we'll go ahead and select our camera and lamp. So just uh, select and then shift select this one. And then go to object, delete. We don't want to see the uh, camera and lamp for now. We just want to work with only the stuffed teddy bear. Uh, then go ahead and select the cube and we're going to be using the default cube for this one. If you don't see a default cube in your version of Blender, go to Shift A Mesh Cube or alternatively go to Add Mesh Cube. Then what we want to do is we want to smooth out the, this cube. So we're going to do that by going to the uh, Modifier panel in the Properties window, Add Modifier, then Subdivision Surface. So you have something that looks like this. It's basically subdivided the actual cube and smoothed it out so that we have more vertices to play around with. We're pretty much going to use the cube to block out the overall shape of our teddy bear. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead now and change from vertex select mode to face select mode. Then we want to go ahead and select the top face. So I'll just click and drag this and select the top face over here. And then after that, I want to go to the uh, Extrude tool. So go ahead and select this Extrude tool over here. By the way, make sure you're in Edit mode when you do this. So if you're in Object mode, just uh, you can either tab into Edit mode or you can change from Object mode to Edit mode. Then you'll be able to see these uh, tools over here. Once you go ahead and select the Extrude region, go ahead and uh, click this plus sign and just move it up a little bit. Just a very tiny amount. What we're going to do is we want to create the neck of our bear. So then let's uh, go to the scale and then click and drag inwards. So now it's time to shape out the uh, neck of our teddy bear. After that, I'm going to go ahead and go back to the extrude again and then just uh, uh, click and drag this plus button uh, just a little bit over here, just a tiny amount. And then we're going to go back to the scale and then click and drag almost to the uh, size of the body. So not, not all the way to the end, but just leave a little bit of a gap. The teddy bear's head tends to be almost the size of its body. It tends to be quite big, but it um, isn't as high. So let's go back to the extrude tool again and click and drag this plus icon over here. And let's move it up to something around about there. So now we have the overall shape of our teddy bear. If you want, you can go ahead and select these um, faces and then scale them out so maybe on the x-axis, make it a little wider, but it really depends uh, on, on your own preference. So you just pretty much want to shape it out until you're happy with the overall shape of the teddy bear. 
Now at this point, um, I don't have enough vertices or faces to extrude out the arms and the legs because we only have a very boxy model. So what I'm going to do is I'm pretty much going to apply the subdivision surface modifier. So go ahead and, and click on apply. So now it is a standalone mesh and I can select these individual faces now to start to um, pretty much create our, um, our teddy bear. Another thing, I also want to save a lot of time. So I don't want to uh, create each arm like separately, like put, do one arm over here and then do another arm separately over here. It's a waste of time. So I'd rather just do one arm and just have it automatically mirrored onto the other side. Same goes with the legs. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm just going to go ahead and use a mirror modifier. So to do that, go ahead and let's first of all turn on show or toggle x-ray so we can see through the mesh. Go ahead and select the vertex select mode or the face select mode, both will work. And then I'm going to go ahead and select none. And then we can go box select. So go ahead and select this tool over here, select box. And then just click and drag this half of the mesh. And then just go to, I think, vertex, uh, sorry, mesh delete vertices. So we're left with just half the mesh. Then we want to go ahead and go to add modifier. I'm going to use a mirror modifier. Make sure clipping is turned on. So that means that if we, for example, if I turn off clipping, we can move the middle uh, vertex over here and it will go through the mirror, like it will overlap on the mirror. But if I turn on clipping, it's stuck. You can't, it's, it's clipped to right on the center. If that makes sense. Okay, so we can turn off X-ray now so we can see the solid mesh. And now if I start to, uh, like, if I start to extrude out, we can see mirrored on both sides. So that's exactly what we want to do. But I, I don't, I don't want to just go ahead and mirror it straight out like that. I want to first of all make it, um, like set it up to mirror nicely. So right now it's looking a little too boxy. So let's go ahead first and make it into a nice circle. So I'm going to go ahead and select this vertex over here and hit GG to move it up. This one GG to move it down. And then let's just maybe move this one GG in a little. GG. When I say GG, I mean G twice. Let's move this one in. So we have a nice sort of circular kind of a shape going on. And then I'm going to go ahead and I think now I'm start. I'm ready to extrude out. So let's go to the extrude tool and then just click and drag. And let's just move this one around like so. So I'm just clicking and then rotating. You can use the rotate tool or you can use R on your keyboard. So it's moving this out. But I just tend to find it, I tend to find shortcut keys a lot more easier to work with. Okay. Um, I think that's a good start. And then what we'll do is just to make it look more smoother, I'll go ahead and add in another subdivision surface modifier. So go to add modifier subdivision surface so that it looks a lot more smooth. We tend to use the subdivision surface when we work with organic type of models like characters, animals, uh, toys, things like that. We don't use subdivision surface as much for more uh, hard surface type of models like tables, chairs, furniture, um, buildings, you know, things like that, vehicles. So um, right now I'm, I'm going to go ahead and shape this out even more because I think it can afford to be a lot more rounder. So I'm going to select this vertex and move it down. Really your goal is just to make it look as round and smooth as possible. Okay, so I think that's looking okay. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and select these two faces and then extrude them out again. So click and drag. Now what I want to do is I just want to move this over here. You can use the move tool or use G on your keyboard to do that. Then R to rotate. By the way, the shortcut keys that you can memorize is G to move, R to rotate, S to scale. G actually stands for grab, not, not move. Sorry about that. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to scale this down. It's looking a little too wide. Maybe scale it more on the X axis. So go S, X. And then over here, I'm just going to manually just position these things. So I'm, I'm going to go to select this vertex, move it down, then move this one down as well, this one down as well, move this one in, move this one in, round it out quite a bit, move this one down, 
Where's the other vertex? I can't really see what the vertices that I'm working with. So just to make it even easier, we can go ahead and select this little triangle icon here called on cage and the subdivision surface modifier so that uh, we can see the vertices applied on the subdivision surface modifier. So it makes everything easier to see. Okay, so I'll move this one in. So I'm not doing anything overly special here. I'm just rounding out the arms. Okay, so I think it's looking okay. Okay, so in terms of how long you want your teddy bear's uh, arms to go, it really depends. You can make it as long as you want. I tend to find for toy, for toy teddy bears, it tends to be as long as the body. I might make the body a little longer actually. Get something like that. Something like that will be good. Then I'll go to vertex select and I think I'll round this one out even more. Alright, so I think that is okay for the arms. Next up, we're going to work on the legs. I'm going to go ahead and select these three faces over here. Uh, and um, I can go ahead and hit extrude like this and then just drag it out. But the problem is it will drag out the entire area. I want it to be separate. So I think the main reason why uh, it's, dragging, it's extruding out this entire area is because we have clipping turned on. So go ahead and disable clipping temporarily. Now drag out, and now we have two separate leg areas. So I might just drag out a little bit like that. Or actually what I might do is I'll just go ahead and use the inset faces tool over here, rather than extrude, and then click and drag inwards. And then just uh, make it a little bit smaller. So this is gonna be the area where we're gonna uh, bring out our teddy bear's legs. Okay, and then after you've done that, go ahead and hit the extrude tool and then just drag it outwards. And for this one, I'm just going to move it up, rotate it up, and we can start to uh, shape out the legs to be a lot more rounded. Uh, and let's go ahead and select, I forgot to the box select, I'll select all these ones over here. this one as well and I'm just going to go to the uh, top view by middle mouse clicking and dragging or using this widget here it's the same thing and then we'll just move this in place and then rotate around make the legs sort of face uh, the front and we might scale it down just a tad okay so it's starting to take a little bit of a shape and then what we'll do is we'll extrude once more like so, just a little bit, and then we'll select uh, these two faces over here, so go back to face select, select these two faces, and then go to the um, uh, extrude tool, which we already have, and then just click and drag it upwards to create the feet. Okay, so I think that is looking quite nice. Another feature of teddy bears is the, the bottom soles of the feet, it tends to have another type of material to it. So we're going to go ahead and emulate that one as well. So go ahead and select these faces over here, and this one as well. And then let's uh, go to inset faces, so go ahead and select that one. Click and drag to move it in just a little bit, a tad. And then go to the extrude tool and move it inwards. Okay, once you've done that, scale it down by hitting S and then extrude once more by just clicking and dragging outwards. So we have something that looks like that. Alright, cool. So in terms of the teddy bear's legs, I think what I'm going to do is I might scale it down a little bit more. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, so I think the modeling of the legs is now good. The arms is also now good as well. So the final thing that's left to model is really the face. So let's go ahead and do that now. So how am I going to approach this? Well, I think the head can be a little taller. So let's move G, Z to move it up a little. Uh, I think that's okay. And let's now, uh, we need to now create the 
the nozzle, the nose area for the, the teddy bear. So to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and pretty much do what I've been doing for the legs and the arms. I'm just going to shape these out to be more rounded. So let's go ahead and select this one. Oops, turn clipping back on again. So it stays in its place. Let's move it up. Let's move these ones in. Oh, sorry, I need to select this one because that's the mirror. Let's move this one inwards a little. Um, and might move this one in. Might move this one down. Just to add a bit more detail, I might go ahead and add in another loop over here. So go to the loop cut tool and then highlight your, well, hover your mouse over this, this loop over here. Then just click. Uh, and then uh, go back to the select mode and hit GG twice and then it's going to tighten up this corner over here. Go ahead and select this loop by hitting Alt left click or Alt right click, depends on how, you're, how, how you, you would usually select objects. Then hit S to scale up a little. I might move this out and that's a good shape to start with. So I might move it in a bit more actually. Move it out. Move this one out. Move this one in. And this one in as well. Okay. So trying to get this sort of rounded kind of a shape. Uh, I don't think it needs to be as wide as well. So I guess I'll move it in a little, uh, just in a tad. Okay, so once you sort of have a, a somewhat rounded shape, let's go back to the face select mode, select these two faces. And it's okay to keep clipping on for this one, because we're gonna go ahead and extrude uh, sorry, this one. I'm going to extrude this one out just a little bit. So I'll just do one tiny extrude. So just click and drag a little bit and then click and drag once more. To make it look more smoother, I'll just go ahead and click Control plus plus and hit W or go to Vertex Select, hit W and then Smooth Vertices. Smooth Vertices so that it looks more and more rounded. Okay. So I think that should fix that. But I think I also want to go ahead and select that loop and hit GG and just go ahead and tighten it up by moving the vertices back. I think we now have the uh, nose area of the um, the bear. I, I think most of our modeling work is now done. Like we don't need to do much mirror work or anything like that anymore. So I think, well actually I might just go ahead and do a final little tweak to the head. Uh, maybe move this one out. Make it a more bear type of head shape. Just tweak this to how uh, how you want your final bear to look like. Uh, the back of the bear head. And we can move it back. Something like that. So let's go ahead and, and hit apply, apply. And now the mesh is now standalone. So if I move one side, the other side will not be affected. But I'm not quite done with the modeling yet. I still need to model the ears and also the nose as well. Uh, and later on add the eyes, but the eyes will be separate. Okay, so um, let's go back and turn on the X-ray. The reason why I turn on X-ray is because if I go ahead and select half the mesh like this and then, and then hit uh, delete vertices, it doesn't delete the back. So that's because you can't see the back. So we only see this much. So when I do X-ray, and then select the mesh, it selects all through the back as well. So that's the reason why I toggle on X-ray. Okay, so let's go back to vertex select mode and uh, let's select this half over here. Make sure you select all. So go all the way near to the center line and now go ahead and hit X, delete vertices, all mesh, delete vertices. You can see the shortcut key over there, X vertices. Now let's go back to add modifier and let's do it again. Let's add a mirror modifier and a subdivision surface modifier. So it looks even more smoother now. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and turn off the x-ray and we're going to start to create the ears. So for the ears, um, exactly pretty much similar like we've been doing before, we shape out this into a more circular form. So 
might leave a little bit of a gap there so we might move this one in but for this one i want to do it a little differently i'm going to sort of shape it like that so make this part go in a little bit and this, this one comes in this one comes in this one comes in okay so let's go into face select mode select these four faces and let's just extrude this out once by a little bit by using the extrude tool or hitting e on your keyboard which is a shortcut and then hit e once more and then we have the ears that look like that cool so now it's just a matter of going in and manually shaping it so i'm going to turn on the cage for this one and let's just move everything uh, so that it looks like an ear so for this one you can use a reference image but i'm just going to go ahead and uh, manually just do this cool so that's looking all right we'll just select these two faces over here and then just click and drag to extrude them inwards like so let's move them out a little scale them down just scale them the z a little and we have something that looks like that okay and now the ears are done okay one uh so this part look, it looks a little weird so let's move this in move this in move this down shake this out a little shake this up so there's a lot of tweaking that needs to be done but I think that's okay to begin with I think that's okay for now okay so another thing that we need to do is uh, we need to add in the nose so for the nose I'm just gonna go ahead and just shape out a very simple nose so let's turn on clipping for this one let's move it like this and the nose is going to be sort of this kind of a shape so it's sort of like a V kind of a shape Okay, and let me just um, move this one, hit G, and let's move it out a little like that. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and hit the extrude tool, and then extrude out by clicking and dragging. And we'll just move it a little, and then extrude once more. Okay, and then let's now uh, reposition these verts so that they make a lot more sense. So let's move this down. Okay, so we have the nose that looks like so. Let's just move this in. Uh, like so. move it up a little. Okay, and I think the nose is now good to go. Okay, one final thing we need to do is we need to add in the eyeballs. So for the eyeballs, it's going to be quite simple. So stay in edit mode when you do this, but uh, go ahead and click outside. So put the 3D cursor over there. Then hit Shift A, and then UV sphere. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and expand this little dialog box thing over here, and then change the segments to something a little smaller. I guess we can go 16. Don't need to be so high res. And then we'll just rotate it. Go R X 90. So it sort of faces the front, and then we scale down a little and we move it in place where the eyes will be. So I'll go to this view and scale it down and you can make the eyes as big or as small as you want it to be. I guess to keep it cute, I'll keep the eyes relatively big. Okay, actually maybe a little smaller than that. Too big and can, can be a little creepy as well. So let's make it a little smaller. 
and make it just stick out of the head like so. Okay, so it now starts to look like a proper teddy bear. Uh, I might also go ahead and turn this one, proportional editing, so that means if I click that and then move, it will also affect, I might change this one also to, sorry, to connect it only so that it doesn't affect the eyes. So it selects the vertices that are within the vicinity of this little circle. And you can change the influence by just scroll scrolling up and down. Okay, so I, I'm I can just very quickly uh, shape out the form how I, how I want it. So maybe it needs to be a bit more rounded. Something like that. And here. Okay, uh, and what I'll also do is I'll just go ahead and add in a loop over here just to make it a little bit more tight. Control R and add one over here. So either you can use the loop cut tool, sorry, this one, or you can use Control R as you can see from the shortcut when I hover. And then just add a loop cut like so just to tighten the bend around that area and I think the overall model is now completed so I think we're now good to go so let's go ahead and apply the mirror modifier and the subdivision surface and we have the mesh that looks like that and if you're in edit mode go back to object mode and um, we'll also smooth it out go to object oh, sorry. yeah object shade smooth okay so that's what it looks like if you want to do some further tweaking uh, and not do it in the um, uh, ed edit mode you can also do it in the sculpting mode as well so you can play around with the sculpting brushes I'm not, probably not going to go into too much detail uh, but I think really the only brush that will make sense for this case is the grab brush uh, and then I'll just go ahead and click and drag and just round out these little bits over here it's just like a, f a final polish, a final tweak to the model. Now I can keep on tweaking on and on forever. The modeling process doesn't really end. You can, you, if you spend a lot of time, you can actually end up tweaking for pretty much forever. So I think for the teddy bear, that's looking quite fine. Okay, so I think that's good enough. So the teddy bear modeling is now complete. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to texture this teddy bear. Uh, that's, uh, before we add any fur of any kind, that's probably where we need to start off with. So to do that, I need to define the areas of the fur that are going to uh, take effect. Like we don't want the fur to come out of the eyes or the nose, for instance. Another thing, we want to have a different type of fur coming out from this part of the leg and also uh, this part of the, the ears and even the area around the nose. Okay, so we'll start off with the main fur. So we need to define which vertices over here uh, will have the main fur growing out from. So we can define that in the object data properties of this uh, teddy bear, so just tap into edit mode. And then I'm now going to go ahead and select the entire thing by hitting A on my keyboard, or you can just go select all. And then let's go ahead and uh, hit plus on the add vertex group. And we're just going to double click that one and call it main fur area. You can call it whatever you like really. So after I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and click assign. Okay, so right now we've, we've told it that this entire area we're going to use to pretty much grow the fur from. But there's a mistake by doing that because now the fur will grow out of the eyes and the nose and these areas as well. And we don't want that. So in order to prevent that, we select each eye, so hover your mouse over the eye and hit L to select the linked vertices. Same over here, hit L. So we have the two selected vertices over here. And then go ahead and hit remove. So now if I go ahead and select none, and then with the main fur area selected, if I go ahead and hit select, we select everything except the eyes. So now the fur will not grow out of the eyes. So we're going to do the same thing for the nose as well. So to do the nose, because this is, this is connected, I can't just use L, because the entire thing is connected. L is used to select the linked vertices. So I, to do this, I have, I'll just select the middle vertices over here, 
and I hit control plus 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 and then we'll go ahead and remove we remove the main fur area there as well um, and also we want to go ahead and remove the fur coming out of these areas as well this will be a fur area as well but we'll use a different type of fur for that one we'll be using more lighter fur so hit control plus 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 and just select the entire area like so so maybe around about there will be good and then let's go ahead and hit remove so now if I go ahead and select none of them and go ahead and select the main fur area and hit select these are the areas where the fur will grow out from oh sorry I also forgot we don't want the main fur area to come out of the, in this area as well so I may as well just go ahead and select this entire area uh, let's go to the side view and I might just turn on the x-ray for a second and then with the box select I'll just go ahead and select uh, all of, oh, actually let's make it like that and then maybe I'll go ahead and hit C on my keyboard to circle select and then color all of this in so we have something like that turn off x-ray hit control plus 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 Maybe around that much will be good and we'll remove the main fur area from this finally we'll also uh, I forgot as well we'll move it from this one as well so hit control plus plus and might select this and this same over here this one and that one and remove okay so now let's have a look at the, the, where the main fur area will be there we go so this is the area where the main fur will grow from uh, and not in these other areas okay so what we need to do now is we need to uh, add one more vertex group and this will be where the uh, secondary fur area will be okay so for this one it's going to be in this area this area but not the eyes so it grows everywhere but not the eyes and the nose so to do that we need to go ahead and hit control I so that will invert the selection and we hit assign on the secondary fur area so that's not correct so we'll do the same thing like before select the eyes and remove it and then also the nose here and remove so now if I deselect everything by going select none and then select the secondary uh, fur area we have something that looks like that so now what we need to do is we need to set up our materials for the bear so the material is going to be quite basic so first of all let me save my work so I've got a file save so the material for this one will be quite basic so let's go to the uh, shading tab for this one so that we can see better what we're doing um, and let's also go ahead and tap into edit mode and let's start off with the main fur so I'm going to go ahead and well first of all let's add the main material so I'll call this one the main fur it will simply be the color that we want the bear to be so start off with a dark brownish color something that looks like that and we don't need the bear to have any specularity uh, it is quite rough because we're just going to assume it has a, a cloth type of material so this is, be this is behind so maybe this is the base fur base bear material next material that we want to have uh, is the actual fur bear fur the main fur material so for the main fur material we'll just go ahead and go to the vertex or the object data properties go ahead to the main fur area and just select that uh, and what we're going to do is go back to the uh, material properties over here and then we're just going to go ahead and hit assign okay and for this one it's going to be a, a light sort of a lightish brown kind of a color almost orange or actually pretty much orange so I might go a little dark on the orange something like that and again no specularity and it's quite rough might actually make it a little darker like so 
cool adding an, another uh, but also we don't want to use a principal BSD yeah? uh, we'll, we'll get to that later uh, we'll go ahead and add in another material uh, we'll call this one the secondary the material and this one will pretty much be a very light brown fur so very very light So closer to white. So it's like orange, but closer to white. So once you have that, let's go ahead and tap into edit mode. Go to the uh, object data properties. Uh, make sure you select none first. And then with the secondary first selected, go ahead and hit select. And then just um, go back to the material properties window and then hit assign for the secondary fur material. Okay, and also another one for the eyes. This is going to be quite simple, just go into edit mode, make sure you select none and then hover your mouse over this eye and hit L same with this eye and then hit L and then hit assign and this one is going to have a very, uh, this one's going to be like pretty much just a black material and I type out of edit mode this one will have a lot of specular and not as much roughness and maybe even a little bit of a sheen Maybe not too much spec. For the nose, uh, maybe one more material. I'll copy the eyes material, but then instead I'll duplicate it by hitting the two. And I'll call it the nose. Oops, the caps lock, nose. And the nose, the only difference is the specular will be very sh a bit smaller and it's a bit more rough. And for that one, I'll go ahead and select this area. And then hit assign. Okay, so we have the entire teddy bear now assigned the, the base material. I might go ahead and make some changes over here. Make the bear a little bit more interesting. Make it a little darker. Yeah, I think it'll look better. Teddy bears tend to be a little bit more brown rather than orange, I think. Well, they can be orangey, goldy kind of a color as well. So I'll go with a more brown color. Okay, so now that that's done, let's now start to grow out the fur. So I'll go to the layout tab for this one and I'll expand this one out and expand this one out. We might go to the uh, this view over here just so that we can see what we're doing. And then let's go to the particle properties. We're going to be using the particle system to grow out the fur. So go ahead and hit this plus over here, change this to hair and I'll just call this one the main fur. Same with this one, the main fur. Let's go ahead and tick advanced. We'll go with 7,000 uh, particles. So you can see it looks crazy right now. Uh, we want the fur to be a lot smaller. So I'm going to go 0.1 to start off with. And this really depends on how furry you want your teddy bear to be. If you want to be really nice and furry, then make it long. If you want to be like almost just like, like a very light fur, then go even smaller. So for my case, I might make it really like relatively furry. So I'll go with 0.1. It's a good place to start with. Okay, but right now it's growing everywhere, including the, this part of the feet, it's growing out of the nose, and it's growing out of the eyes as well. So this is where we make use of the vertex groups. So over here in the vertex groups, expand that out. In, under density, choose main fur area. So now it doesn't grow in the areas of where we didn't define it, and it only grows in these areas over here. Actually, I might go ahead and make the fur a little smaller, 0.07, and we'll make it like that. Um, in terms of the actual um, combing of the furs, I mean, you could go into particle edit right now and you can actually use a comb brush to comb the furs, but I'm not going to do that. With a teddy bear, I think it's okay to just to leave it as is. It, it's, uh, it keeps it interesting. There we have it, like that. Okay, so I'll just leave it as is. And what I'll do instead is I'll make use of children. So this is where the magic, the magic actually happens. So go ahead and hit interpolated and we have something that looks like that. So what this, this means is for each hair strand that we define over here, it will surround that hair strand with 100 other hair strands. Right now the display we have 10, but when you actually render it out, it'll be even more. So that's why we don't want to go all the way to 100 because it may actually crash our viewport and make, make it quite slow. So I'm just going to stick to that one for now. 
And right now the material looks incorrect as well. So make sure we go into the uh, render settings, change the material from, from base pair material to main fur material. So it looks like that. Right now the fur doesn't look very fuzzy and soft. It just looks like it's being electrocuted and it's just in shock. So that doesn't look quite right. So we need to make it look nice and fuzzy and nice and soft. So to do that, we make uh, use of the children's settings over here. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to use a clumping. So first tend to clump together. So don't go, so that means like, like this. So as you can see, uh, if the, the bear was wet, uh, the hairs, the hair strands would, would clump together quite a lot. So I'm not going to, to go overboard with the clumping. Maybe I'll just go point uh, four five would be okay for now, I guess. And for the shape, uh, so right now you can see that the furs are all clumping in straight lines. The shape can make it look like it's um, can define how the clumping is going on. So for this case, I might just make it go in the negative direction a little. So it sort of clumps like that rather than clumping in a concave direction it clumps in a convex direction i think i'm saying that right or maybe not I, I don't know but yeah it just changes the direction of the clumping so it's still starting to look a little bit more like proper fur another thing that we need to change is the roughness so we need to make it uh, a little bit more uh, scraggly at the end point because right now it's just all looking too neat so for the scraggly i just change this end point value over here uh, we tend to increase this one quite a bit. So maybe 0.2, maybe a good, oh, that starts to go crazy. We'll go at 0.2. I mean, it, it really needs a lot of experimenting, maybe 0.1. And then we each turn up the shape. We'll turn up the shape something like that so it's now starting to look like a scraggly bear but just it adds a lot more randomness to it and look it starts to look nicer okay so I think for that part uh, that's pretty much done uh, oh also for the length I might tone this down quite a bit so the children particles as you can see over here children particles are smaller than the main parent particles so it might go like 0.6, but then we'll turn up the thresholds. So that means some some of the children will uh, be a little longer. So I might go like that and turn up the threshold. So that'll add a little bit more variation to the, the surface. It won't look like a straight line. Okay, so in terms of that, I think that's looking good. If I increase the number to, let's say, 30, it starts to look even better. Cool. So now let's do the same thing for the secondary fur area. So for the secondary fur area, what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit plus. And this will be called secondary fur area. Secondary fur. And then for this one, I'm going to go ahead and select the main fur. So we're copying the main fur, but I'm just going to hit, go ahead and hit two to duplicate it and call this one the secondary fur. So now it is its own fur material. And we're not going to use 7,000. I think that's a little bit overkill. We'll go with 4,000 maybe. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to make the length a little s even smaller, 0 0.04, maybe okay. And it's not going to grow out of the main fur area, it's going to grow out of the secondary fur area. Like so. The material is incorrect, so we need to go ahead and un under render, I think it's over, where is it? over here, change it to secondary fur material. And that starts to look even better. So the difference with the secondary fur area is that the fur is a lot more like it's a lot more kept and it's a lot more combed so it's a lot more neater so for that one I'm going to uh, just turn down the noise in the children's settings so endpoint can be like 0 0.02 or something so it looks a lot more neater this is not the final settings so don't have to copy exactly what I'm doing over here I'm literally just tweaking it as I go your settings will probably likely be different to mine uh, it depends on how you model the bear and how big your your scale of the the, the bear is. So you have to literally uh, play around with these settings to, to match your to match your scene. So when I, all I'm saying is just change the endpoint and the shape just to create this variation over here, and then even sometimes even the uniformity as well. 
that's on also the clumping as well so you just need to experiment by looking at your viewport to see if it makes your bear look better so don't don't worry about copying my settings you'll have to tweak your own settings to make it look nice i, I want to decrease the length of my main fur it's going to be a little bit too much and yeah we'll keep it to something like that okay so i think we have the main the main fur done so i might actually turn it down to 70 children 100 might be overkill for the secondary fur same thing i might put about 50 children I might, I might just go ahead and use a simple plane and a light so for the light i'll just use uh, yeah, maybe we'll start off with an area light. Uh, might make it about uh, 100 watts. So, also if I look at the render now, that's what it looks like. So that's what it looks like at Eevee. Uh, but since I'm going for realism, I'm probably going to change this over to cycles. So go over here to the render properties and change the render engine from EV to Cycles. So I think immediately we'll start to see a more realistic looking fur. Okay, so that's what it looks like so far. Clearly I need to do a lot of uh, tweaks to the settings of this one. So over here I might, uh, for the secondary fur, there's a lot of issues. So I think the uniform will go ahead and remove that. Yeah, uh, we don't need as much clumping, so maybe 0.2. Uh, okay, so that's that looks better. The material of the fur is not realistic. Now with cycles, we can get even better looking um, material than what we have over here. So the way to do that is in the uh, shading settings. So let's go over here. So for the uh, main fur material, we don't use the principal BSDF shader. There's another dedicated shader for this one. It is Shift A, or you can go Add uh, a Shader Principled Hair BSDF. So that's another another node. So we'll go ahead and copy this one. So hover your mouse over this color, Control C, Control V, and plug this one into the surface instead. Okay, and we'll remove this one. Um, it's, it's black in the viewport over here because this, this is just the uh, viewport shading mode, not the actual final rendered mode. EV does not support principal hair BSDF. That's why it's looking black. Okay, so we'll do the same thing with the secondary fur material. So Shift A, shader, principal hair BSDF. Uh, control C on this color, Control V there, and plug that to the surface. Okay, and remove that one. So now if I go back to the layout mode, that fur should look a lot more realistic. Most times I tend to find that I have to tweak out the hair shape. Like the radius root of one meter may be a little bit too much. So maybe 0.4 tends to be the one that I tend to go with. But maybe I might do a render just to see what it looks like. So I can't really tell from the viewport. So let's just go out of this view for a second. And I might go ahead and duplicate this lighting, create a very basic three-point light. So maybe for this one, I might make it a little bit more of a light blue. And look back over here, I might just make it m more powerful. Uh, this can be a lot more of a yellow. And we'll also go ahead and add in a camera over here. So shift A, camera. And now go numpad zero and move the camera in place. And let's have a look at that when rendered. So I'll quickly pause the video and I'll get back to you once rendered. All right, and there you go. It's still rendering right now, but we can see that the fur is looking amazing. The resolution is too small when I zoom in, but it's looking amazing. Uh, another thing, you can see these little bright orangey spots on the, the bear. What I realized why that's happening is because the original base mesh that's under the, the bear's fur is also using that fur material that doesn't make sense because one of the uh, the main components of fur 
is that light can penetrate through it. Like believe it or not, the hair has a bit of translucency, so light can penetrate through it. So that's why we're seeing this this main character, uh, this base mesh, have uh, fur coming through. So that's not correct at all. So we need to go ahead and fix that. So that's why I created that um, uh, that initial material over here, the base bare material. So this one's the one where we need to have it applied to the, the base material. So in, to do that, go ahead and select the main fur material and the secondary fur material. And go ahead and select the base bare material and hit assign. Okay, so now it should have just a brown material underneath and light should not be penetrating through it. So now let's have a look at that when rendered. So render image. All right, and there we have it. A realistic stuffed teddy bear that will look good in any scene. So that's how you create a stuffed teddy bear. To save it out as an image, uh, just go and hit image and then save or save as. And then you can choose uh, the extension that you want. PNG, JPEG, or any of these other formats if you're familiar with them. Uh, choose a name for your file and the directory of your file and then go ahead and hit save as image. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I hope this tutorial has been useful to you. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop it in the comments and please like, share and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.